Welcome to the Illinois Physical Therapy Association's Assembly of Representatives Education Module titled Logistics and Process. The objectives of this education module are to describe the pre-assembly activities and preparation, describe what to expect at the assembly, inform you of the assembly officers and parliamentarian and their roles, describe how to be recognized to speak to a motion, and how to handle motions through deliberation and voting. Pre-assembly activities uh, allow the representatives to be prepared and have preliminary discussions on the issues. The intent is for assembly representatives to be as prepared as possible and as informed as possible by the time a vote on a motion is taken. Before the assembly, representatives can become knowledgeable of the issues in the packets, the handbook, and the information posted on the assembly community website. There are also these orientation or education modules that you can view, so thank you for viewing this one. There are assembly conference calls. These conference calls are set by the speaker of the assembly and allow representatives to ask questions of makers of motions, uh, to listen to their su support statements, to ask questions of those that submitted reports in the packets, and again, an opportunity to ask for more resources or clarification of any information related to the assembly. There are also district meetings that representatives can attend. The district meetings usually occur before the assembly and allow um, opportunity for members to become aware of the motions and to start to voice their opinions. Also, districts may schedule conference calls. And if this is the case, as a representative, you will hear from your district chair if a conference call is scheduled for your district. Also, before the assembly begins, there's an opportunity for caucus time. That just means an opportunity for representatives to meet with other representatives, maybe within their same district, other districts, uh, within uh, special interest groups, um, the board of directors, um, anyone that is attending the assembly. If you are interested in caucus time, please notify the IPTA staff so that they can arrange for a meeting space for you. Representatives really need to be prepared, and the best way to do that is to access the assembly community regularly and often. It can be accessed through IPTA.org, and if you have any difficulty accessing the assembly community, then please contact IPTA staff, and they will help you. When you come into the meeting room for the assembly, it is a very large meeting room that accommodates about 150 people. And you'll notice at the front of the room is what we call the dais, and that just means stage. And on the dais is what we call the assembly officers, consisting of the speaker of the assembly, the vice president of IPTA, who is also the vice speaker, the secretary of IPTA, and a parliamentarian. We're going to go through the roles of each of the assembly officers, starting with the Speaker of the Assembly. So the Speaker of the Assembly is responsible for conducting the meeting itself. Um, and that includes all the ceremonial activities, making the announcements, as well as running the business portion of the assembly. The Speaker's job is to assure that assembly activities occur in accordance with the association and chapter bylaws, the standing rules for the assembly, and parliamentary authority, which for us is Robert's Rules of Order. The speaker attempts to alternate debate between opposing viewpoints to aid in the flow of discussion so that all views may be heard. The speaker really works hard to try to make sure that debate is free and non-threatening and balanced. The vice president or vice speaker of the assembly assumes the role of the speaker if the speaker is unable to conduct the meeting. The vice speaker or vice president is also responsible for a lot of the logistics that are happening during the assembly meeting to make sure that it is run in an efficient manner. The vice speaker serves as the timekeeper, allowing each speaker two minutes. The vice speaker also identifies which representatives are wishing to speak. And 
The vice speaker conducts a counting vote in the case of what's called a division. And we'll talk in another presentation, uh, or even this one, later on about that. Also, there's the secretary. The secretary of the assembly is responsible for keeping all formal records of our association, of the IPTA. So that's the assembly, the board of directors, and the executive committee. The secretary is responsible for submitting those minutes uh, of the chapter membership and the assembly to the APTA. The secretary, the morning of the assembly, is responsible for representative credentialing, and that is the check-in process that is essential for representatives to follow in order to be eligible for voting. And the secretary also records the voting strength of the assembly. Uh, the secretary will actually be a part of uh, giving that report to the assembly, letting the, each district um, and voting representative know how many votes are present and how many votes are being carried. Also on the dais is the parliamentarian. And the parliamentarian acts as a consultant to the reference committee and provides advice to the speaker before and during the assembly proceedings. The parliamentarian is also available for representatives to ask questions during the assembly. So if you're kind of lost or you have a question about parliamentary procedure, uh, even during the assembly, you can uh, be recognized to ask a question to the parliamentarian. When you come into the assembly room, it will be set up and you'll need to look for um, the tables and identify where you're sitting by where your district sign is or your student uh, uh, SIG group, your student special interest group, or where the student representatives are sitting. There will be signs on the table, so you should be able to find that uh, location, again, with your district, with the student SIG officers, or with the student representatives from the schools. At the tables, you also notice that there is a, what we call duplicate paper and CR paper, uh, that if you want to prepare motions or amend motions during the assembly, we ask that you write on the special paper because it is in triplicate form. One copy will go to the vice speaker, one copy will go to the secretary, and the other copy will go to the staff, so your motion or amendment can be displayed on the projector for everyone to see. Also on the table are paddles, and these paddles are a way of communicating with the uh, speaker and the vice speaker on the, the dais as to what your intentions are. We'll go over the colors of these um, paddles and what they mean. So when you're asking to be recognized to speak, the first thing that you need to do is actually raise your district, your student SIG officer signs or the student's representative sign from your table. And you just raise it up, you get the attention of the vice speaker, and the best way to do that is to make eye contact and make sure that he or she recognizes that you want to speak. Then raise whatever card it is for what you wanna do. So there's a green card. That means you want to speak in favor of a motion. The red card means that you wanna speak against a motion. The yellow card means you'd like to amend a motion. And a black question mark means you'd like to ask a question. Raising the proper color card, again, helps the vice speaker know what your intentions are, who then informs the speaker. And the speaker does his or her best job in balancing the debate. And that uh, sometimes will um, happen if, if there are people that are for and against a motion. Um, you might see the speaker pick on one person for, followed by someone who is against um, versus going straight down the list. Um, and if uh, the speaker sees that there's a lot of people holding up the a black question mark card, that's a sign that they probably need to slow down, stop, and answer questions before moving on. Also at the assembly, we use microphones to help the audience to hear who is speaking. These microphones are located in the aisleway between the tables, and so you would look for the closest microphone to where you are um, and when you are recognized. Now, each district um, will use the microphone that is closest to them, and we ask that you would line up at the microphone when you're called on and be ready to speak. This means that you might actually have what you wanna say written down on a piece of paper, uh, typed into your phone or your laptop, 
just so that you have your thoughts there in front of you. Sometimes being in front of the microphone can be a little daunting for people. Um, so having it written down before you get there um, just might help you keep your thoughts. We ask that you hold the microphone away from your mouth and your lips so that other delegates can see your lips to read them. We also ask that when you uh, get to the microphone that you would give your name, introduce yourself, and which rep uh, district you are representing uh, or student group, um, whether it's the SIG or it is the student reps from the schools. And um, you would do this when the speaker would call upon you. So an example would be, I might say, um, my, uh, I'm Jeanette Elliott, and I rise to speak, oh, wait, I'm Jeanette Elliott, I'm from the Central District, and I rise to speak in favor of the motion. And then the speaker would recognize you, and you would have your two minutes at their microphone to say what it is that you would like to say. Once the assembly begins, there's actually some formalities that um, we go through um, to get things going. Um, the formalities are just things as far as um, making introductions, um, giving a moment of silence for those um, who uh, are members that have gone on, um, making sure that people in the gallery are recognized, and if there are any non-members, uh, to see if the representatives um, are okay with that. Um, and then we move into uh, adopting the credentials report, and that's where the secretary speaks about how many votes are present and how many votes are carried and whether or not we have a quorum. We then approve the assembly rules. Uh, assembly rules are uh, just what we agreed to abide by to help our meeting be efficient. Those rules can be changed. Representatives can move to change any of those rules. Once the rules are voted on, we approve the minutes from the last assembly meeting and then we move into the agenda and approve the agenda. The agenda is actually produced in packet number two so that the representatives do have an idea of the order of reports and business uh, motions uh, that will be happening for that day. So after the agenda is approved, oh, and also representatives can make motions to change the agenda. They can reorder the agenda, they can put time limits on motions or reports. Um, it is their meeting, and so therefore they can manage the agenda um, as they would like and make motions to amend it. And if those motions pass, then that's what the agenda will be. So after the agenda is uh, moved and passed, then we move, we'll have reports with an opportunity for questions and comments. Any unfinished business from last year's assembly, and then we move into new business or new motions. Now, main motions, other than bylaws, they really should direct the policy of IPTA. It should have some kind of stance or point of view, which is possibly known as a position. It could also uh, charge the chapter with certain goals to meet. And then there can also be motions that are binding statements that are used to judge the quality of action or activity, and those are called standards. The real meaning behind motions for the assembly is to give direction and guidance um, for the board of directors so that, um, the, that the board can then carry out the actions of the assembly. So, so examples of motions may be for the board to investigate something, um, it could be to uh, create a task force or a committee um, to accomplish, uh, again, some, some goal. Um, it could be a position statement as to how they would like the APTA to um, feel about certain, certain issues that we're facing. So the thing is, if you have an idea for a motion, the best thing to do is actually to speak to the um, Speaker of the Assembly or the Reference Committee and share that idea so that they can help you formulate what it is and what your intent is. And it may be that the motion really isn't even appropriate for the Assembly, but it could go directly to the board or to another committee um, and, uh, and be addressed that way. Or the Reference Committee can help you write the motion in a way that um, expresses your intent and then it would become before the assembly. Now, 
The merits of the motion is what's really being discussed with our deliberative body. Um, first of all, motions have to be seconded in order to be debated. Um, if it is not second, it fails, and then it moves on to the next motion. So we ask that when, uh, when representatives come to the microphone to speak for or against a motion, that they do it in a very respectful way. Um, and this is actually accomplished by uh, not addressing the maker of the motion um, and confronting them, but actually making eye contact and speaking to the dais and expressing yourself in a way that um, is, again, either for or against the motion, but in a way that does not attack or is confrontational with the maker of the motion. After the debate or discussion, then the motion is put to a vote. And if it's adopted, then the motion can become, again, chapter policy, position, guidelines, standards, or a charge to the board of directors. Uh, but if the motion is defeated, then the next order of business um, is taken up and the process begins again. Now, most motions that we deal with require a simple majority unless they are bylaws. And um, there are some motions that uh, may occur during the assembly that actually require a higher majority, and if that is the case, then the speaker will inform the representative. When we have bylaw changes, which our bylaw year is odd years, and um, they require prior notice to membership. Um, when, they re when they receive prior notice and they are um, then put into the packet, um, they are brought to the assembly, and again, if there is a second for the bylaw amendment, then it will require two-thirds vote to pass it. If there are bylaws that come forward in a non-bylaw year, which are our even years, it actually requires three-fourths of the representatives to vote to hear the motion. And if that passes, then it requires two-thirds vote to pass the amendment. I know that sometimes the voting strengths and um, whether they're bylaws or non-bylaws, it can be confusing. So if you ever have any questions, please contact the Speaker of the Assembly and they'll be happy to um, hopefully give you your answer. Now, when we get to the voting procedure at the Assembly, for a majority, most of the time a voice vote uh, is enough for the Speaker to tell if a majority um, is in favor or against. If they are in doubt, they might ask people to stand and do a rising vote so that visually they can see again, is the majority on the affirmative or on the opposition? When it comes to two thirds votes, rising votes are the easiest way to tell. And if it, the speaker is in doubt, they might even actually do a rising counted vote. But at any time, the representatives can ask for what's called a division. So if there's a representative that questions the ruling of the speaker in a vote and would like it to be recounted, then a rising vote will be done with a count off that's conducted by the vice speaker of the assembly. Now, the goals for the assembly, um, this process and logistics is actually so that the representatives will be as informed as possible. That way, when it comes time to vote, they'll be confident in whether they are voting uh, yes or no, or even abstaining from uh, the motion. Also, the goal is to have an efficient meeting. That's the speaker's job. So the speaker of the assembly is really not um, concerned with motions, uh, whether they're passing or they're not passing, but really making sure that representatives have the opportunity to speak, that the minority voice is protected, and that you don't get bogged down in too much of the formalities. So again, it can be an efficient meeting. Yes, it's the speaker's goal that everyone has the opportunity to speak and be heard and to protect the rights of the members. And then also the overall goal of the assembly of course, is to promote IPTA excellence and advance the profession. So thank you again for listening to this educational module uh, as part of your Assembly of Representatives orientation. Thank you again for serving in this vital role for our uh, chapter, the IPTA. Thank you.